Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss the class 12 computer science topics related to term 2 exam and the project sections that we need to do based on this. And what will be the weightage of each chapter and uh, which are the questions that we can expect within the practical exam and the weightage of each section based on the practical exam and based on the theoretical section that also that we discussed right here. So we are moving to the curriculum as the first step. So here you can see the curriculum. So here the term 2 based topics that we need to cover is for the term 2 only 5 marks that will be asked based on computational thinking and programming. That means from the stack and queue section we can expect 5 marks within the theoretical exam. And for from the computer computer networks, 10 mark question and 20 marks database management. So 20 marks that's provided from the SQL section, both the theory and the queries that we can expect within the board exam. So total 35 marks questions that we are expecting within the term two. And from the networking, these are the main topics that we need to cover. And from the database management. All the aggregate functions and normal DDL and DML commands, everything that we need to cover based on the database management. And within the practical section, we are expecting four mark question based on SQL. Within the term two, four marks that will be provided from the SQL section. You need to solve three SQL queries, minimum three SQL queries based on single table or two tables that means by using the join process or by using other concept you need to solve minimum three questions and then from python program that means uh, based on the stack representation we need to solve one program so the total weightage is four plus two so let's see practical lab exam sections question of uh, one program and uh, minimum three sql queries that we need to solve there then based on the report file that means the record file for that three marks that will be provided so these are the sections that we need to provide for that and then for project five marks so within the project submission the final coding section the and the file that you need to submit and they will ask certain questions based on that the viva that we can expect so total five marks for that and uh, common viva that will be provided for one mark so like this we need to attend the practical section so total 15 marks that will be provided for practical exam and 35 marks for theoretical exam so theoretical exam that's a descriptive exam that we are expecting we don't know how the situations will be within the exam time so we'll expect the descriptive type questions within the board exam are an objective so here this one is the project details that they have provided so sql connectivity that's a mandatory thing or otherwise we can depend on file handling so both these particular sections that we need to combine there within your project so let's see first thing that you need to remember so different sections and and uh, the different concepts that we can club within your project that also that they provided as an example here so please go through this particular instructions and after that we can solve it so here we are moving to the coding sections based on the connectivity and after that we will discuss the entire concept that we can do within our project so we are moving to the first section so for doing our database connectivity section we need a pip installation process pip install that you need to provide within the command prompt so please take the command prompt and then provide pip install mysql hyphen connector so this particular command that you need to provide within your command prompt and if the pip is not recognized there then you need to take the entire path there uh, this particular module is already installed within my system so they will provide the message like 
the requirement already satisfied that particular message we will get back the reason is that particular module is already installed within my system so that's why they are providing such a message if you got a particular error message like the pip is not recognized then you need to provide another mechanism for installing that so just take the script mod then open and then just take the script folder just take this path and that means by defaultly when you are opening the IDLE this one is the IDLE from that just open it and then you can see the script folder there just double click there and we will enter to the main path so here just click on the blank section click on the blank section so that particular path that will be selected automatically then press Control C, Control and C together, or otherwise we can use copy by right clicking within the path. Then, after that, just cancel it and then paste it within the command prompt. Just paste it within the command prompt and then just provide one backslash. Then, the same command that you can provide there pip install mysql hyphen connector. This particular section that you need to provide only if you got an error message here instead of the installation procedure if you got an error message there then you need to provide this process there then only that will, that will be installed automatically. So this particular command that we will provide based on the python installation process. So when you provide the python installation if you check uh, to add the root section then that will be taken this method and if you skip that particular section definitely you need to provide this strategy for installing the pip file. So after installation we will get back the prompt and then you can minimize it. So this installation process uh, that will be done only one time when you use the connectivity section first time within your system. If you already did certain programs within that on each time you don't require to install the pip file again and again within the first time only we need to install the pip file after installation we can use that particular module within any of the programs so that's the process that's the first thing that you need to remember then one more thing when you are installing pip file just make sure that your system is connected to the internet the reason is that particular file is collected from the server from the web server so you need to maintain a proper internet connection within your system when you are providing the pip installation process when you are doing this particular process the, your system must be connected to the internet so from the web server they are collecting it that's why i'm telling you to maintain the internet connection so we are moving to the connectivity coding so here we will discuss the basic operations in this video and on the coming video, we will discuss how we will create a project. In this, we will provide the basic commands that we need to use within the connectivity section. And after that, a menu driven process and the file handling section, how we will club together for our project that we will discuss within the second video. So this one is the connectivity section. So after the pip installation, we will provide import mysql.connector, then import tablet. This particular module also that you need to install separately from the pip section, pip install tablet that you need to provide here instead of mysql hyphen connector, you need to add one more module there for displaying the data within a specific format. I will show you why I am using this particular module import tablet that we will import after pip installation, pip install tablet that you need to use there. Then after that you are setting the connection so this one is the connection string that we are passing within the connect function so mysql dot connector dot connect mysql dot connector dot connect or otherwise you can use a connection alias name there uh, based on the connector module i am providing the alias name con if you are using that then that will be more easy here you can use cyn.connect cyn.connect that's also possible i will run it so here you can see that particular process that's taken automatically so like this we can use the 
connection object. So this one is the connection Lilia's name or connection object that we created there. And if you provide this object generation, that object that you need to use here, then con dot connect off with an off bracket host equal to local host. L host equal to local host means the same system that we are using for storing the database, the same system that we are using for storing the database. The reason is um, within the MySQL or Oracle or SQL server, there is a provision to store our database within another system, within a network system. So instead of that, here we are using our system itself. So that's why we are providing host equal to local host. Then our default username within the MySQL is the root that we are setting here. So user equal to root, that means the MySQL username. The default username within the MySQL is root that we specified there. Then the password that we are providing, my system provided with the password gtp1 that I provided there. Then the database name, whichever the database that you are created for your project, that name that you need to use here. Then cassette, this one is not a mandatory attribute, but if uh, any error message based on UTF-8 that, that you got within the running process, Within my system, actually, we don't. I don't record this one, but within certain systems, uh, they will not support this character set directly. So we need to provide it separately within the connect function. So connect function that's belong to which module? That's belong to connector mysql dot connector module. So like this, we will set the connection, and this one is the connection object mycynn. That's the connection object. And uh, CYN, that's the alias name or the object name that we provided there. CYN dot connect off. So we are providing CYN dot connect off function, and within that we provide the connection string. We provide the connection string. Like this, we will set the connection as the first step. Then we are using the cursor object generation. So the cursor object that we need within our connectivity section. The reason is by using this cursor object, we are passing the SQL queries from Python to MySQL. So that's why cursor is really important within our connectivity section. So cursor object that we have created here by using my connection, this connection object that we are using here, my and dot cursor. So by using this connection object, we are creating the cursor, cursor object. So, my CYNN dot cursor function that will be called for creating the cursor object. Then after that, we can pass any SQL commands directly there. If you are using short databases or select command or insert, whatever we require that we can use or that we can pass from the Python to MySQL by using the cursor object. So, that is the basic purpose of the cursor object. Then here, I am providing the display process database display that means uh, if you need to display the entire databases from the mysql that will be that by using this particular coding i will show you how that will be executed i'm going to uncomment this particular area and then i'm going to execute it so my cursor dot execute of show databases so what will happen they will extract the entire database names so when you are using mysql you can directly provide this command there. So here we will provide the password. So that same password that we are provided for the connectivity. So the TP1, that's the password that I set it within my SQL prompt and the default username. Username that's not provided here or asked to here. That means the default username is root that we used here for the connection, root and password. The same password that I provided here. And then we need to check the database JTP. So, I am providing use JTP here. So, that is changed. We enter to that particular database. And after that, if you provide show databases, what will happen? The entire databases that is already provided within your MySQL that will be displayed there. Show database, databases, not database. So, that is displayed here. So, like this. We got the database names. So the same process that we are doing from Python. Here you can see my cursor. My cursor, that's the object that we are using to execute the command 
show databases show databases that we already did from the mysql the same process that we are going to execute from the python prompt so from the python we are going to execute this particular query so for executing this sql query we are using which function based on which object by using the cursor object we are providing the execute function by using the cursor object we are providing the execute function and we are passing the sql command show databases so after that what will happen that entire table names that will be displayed here whatever we displayed here you can see that the databases that displayed here the same thing that's retrieved within the python prompt so this is the simple process of retrieving the databases from the mysql so we provide the command within the python and the data that we retrieved and displayed within the within the we provide the command from the python and we retrieve the data from the mysql and that data that's displayed from the python itself so like that we can do it so we are moving to the next process how to insert data as tuple so before inserting the data i am going to tell you certain things on certain situations if you need to drop the table that's already generated there with a, a, another number of fields then we need to drop that particular table as the first step so for that if you need to drop the table here you can see that particular table that's already generated uh, with certain values i'm going to select the table name select start from jtptb that's the table name that i provided so here you can see that particular data that's already or uh, that particular database and the table that's already created so i want to delete that particular table i want to delete this particular table so how we will do that the sql query that we will use for deleting the table is drop table table name so here i am going to execute my cur dot execute of drop table then the table name then after that we can create the table by using the command my cursor dot the entire commands that we are executing by using the my cursor object by using the cursor function we create we already created the my cursor object so by using this cursor object we are executing the drop table command and then we are again creating a table here so if you need to provide a table like uh, if the table is uh, is not existing then only if you need to create we can provide the command like this create table if not exist that particular command that we can use so here i am going to command it and uh, i'm going to delete this particular table as the first step i will show you how that will be executed so whenever you are providing certain commands definitely you need to provide commit process there then only that will be executed properly so here i am going to provide one command here we're going to execute it so that particular command that's already executed and we didn't provide any messages there so that why that particular section is blank here i am going to retrieve the data from the table once again and you can see that particular table is not existing there it's no longer existing here so like this we can delete the table if you require if you require to delete a specific table that we can do by using this particular command then what's the next step next step you need to create the table you need to create the table so if you need to create the table if that particular table is not existing then we will provide create table if not exists exists not exist exists then table name then the field names that we will provide there so which are the fields that we are providing number name date of joining and a salary field that we are providing there so these four columns that we are creating within the table and after that i am providing the comment statement for completing that particular process so if i am not providing this particular commit what will happen that also that we will check so here you can see unknown table jtptb that's 
provided there as an error message. Why we got such an error message? We provide the drop table command there. We provide the drop table command there and that particular table is not there. We already deleted a particular table from the database. So, if you try to drop it again, definitely they will raise an error message there. So, for handling that type of errors, we can provide if exist if exists JTPTB like that we can counter check whether that particular table is there or not and if it's existing then we will drop it so like this we can modify the query and we can execute it and that will definitely work so after that we are providing if not exist and this particular commands create and drop actually automatically committed so you don't require to provide commit there so that's work properly and there is no error and then we are moving to the mysql prompt i accidentally closed that particular prompt so i need to take it again so i provide the password then i used the table database name and then we are going to select the table select start from the table name that I provided, we will get an empty set. That means that particular table is already created. So, we are going to insert data to there. So, that's created here. So, we can create the table by using create table if not exists and table name, then the field names that we provided there. So, commit that's not mandatory within this particular create table command. The reason is the DDL and DML commands, there are two types of commands and therefore uh, the budget of the DDL commands that's automatically committed. That's why we don't record it. Then we are going to insert data as the next step. So I'm going to comment this particular portion and then we are going to insert the data within the existing table. So when you are inserting the data, we can do the insertion process by using different techniques, by using different formats. So that different formats also that I am discussing here. So, I am planning to give two insertion process within the existing table. So, we need to insert number, name, date of joining and salary and that we are printing by using print of A. We do not require to print a particular data or otherwise uh, that is possible by using print. Then insert into JTPTB values of we are providing the concatenation process. That is a string type variable that we are using and that value that when you are providing multiple values as comma separated this value that will be within the tuple type and that tuple that we are converting to string and we are providing the concatenation process along with this particular string. So, that particular value that will be added along with the existing insert command. Then we are printing that particular command for seeing how that will be provided there and then we are providing the commit command. This one is a DDL or DML command, this one is a DML command, so definitely we need commit statement there. So, here we are going to execute it. So, a number that is asked there. So, I provide the number, then name, then date of joining, providing the date, then salary. So, like that we provide the data. So, here you can see the tuple data that is displayed here. And then the insertion process that is also provided here. So, that string that is completed, that, that string data that is provided directly there. Then next to value that we are trying to insert here. So, in between we are providing after generating this particular str of a, what we did within the next line, we provide my cursor.execute of str1. So, this particular insertion process that will be executed there this particular insertion process that will be executed there so what will happen that will be executed and that will be inserted there so we are moving to the next insertion process so they are asking for the next value i provide the next value then next name then date of joining and then salary so, that is also inserted there. So, we are already inserted at two values within the table. So, we are going to counter check whether that is inserted or not. Here you can see that particular value that is already inserted within the table. That is already inserted within the table. So, like this we can insert the data. 
this one is one of the mechanism that we can use we take the value within the tuple and then we provide the string operation str of a means we are converting that particular data to string and we provide the concatenation process there and then we are executing that particular command so this is one of the mechanism that we can use or otherwise we can use another technique dot format function dot format function also that we can use for inserting the data so here i am providing insert into then here you can see the first location value second location value third one fourth one then within the format function we are providing the input functions so number name date of joining and then salary that we inserted manually by using input function so this also possible that's particular syntax also available for inserting so here after that we are printing the string and then we are executing the particular string by using my cursor my cursor dot my cur dot execute of str1 so what will happen that will be inserted automatically so after that we are using the comment statement for completing that particular process so like this we can do the insertion process so i am going to execute this statement we are asking for the number we already insert 101 and 102 so i am providing 103 then i am providing the next name then date of joining then the salary providing data so here you can see the data that's already provided as a query here and again the next data 104 then i'm providing the next name then the year of joining then the salary so like this we inserted the next two values that's also inserted within the table here you can count check whether that's inserted or not so here that a b 10 paper data that's also inserted there so like this we can insert the data this is one this one is another syntax available for inserting the data within the mysql so by using dot format we can insert the data or otherwise we can use plus uh, string variable plus a tuple format that we can pass as a string so here this particular syntax is available or otherwise this one that you can use or otherwise the next option is this one this one is the most easiest one for providing the insertion process so we will provide the insertion only one time that i am going to insert that means only one record that i am planning to insert so here sql equal to f we are providing a prefix f there a prefix f there then insert into table name then we are directly accepting value within the curly brace we are directly accepting the value within the curly brace so here we provide int of input of enter number then input of entire name then car date we are providing the current date system date that will be accepted there and then the next value that's we are that we are inserting here so like this we are passing the data to the to the command so like this we are using the insertion process here so we are providing the execute statement and then commit so we will counter check whether that will be worked or not they are asking for the number so up to 104 we already inserted so i inserted 105 then i provide the name then date that's already accepted from the system by using car date so only salary that we need to insert there so i insert the salary so like this they inserted the value so here car date that's passed as an argument car date that function that's passed as an argument to the system so to the mysql and we are going to count check whether the current date is inserted or not so here you can see that date that's automatically inserted when they executed it so like this also we can insert values to the table so these particular three syntaxes that's available for the insertion process so uh, you can use any of these particular strategies 
based on your requirement. So, either you can use f or f suffix method or by using the dot format method or by using the string format we can directly insert the data. So, as the first step we accept the value within the tuple and then we converted it as a string then inserted it by using execute command. So, these three syntaxes that is available for the insertion process and then if you need to delete certain data from the table how we will do that here we are going to insert or we are going to delete a specific data from the table. So, I am going to execute it. So, they are asking for the deletion process and the number for deletion. So, uh, we already inserted 104 there. So, I am providing 104 for the deletion process. So, that particular process is completed and I am going to counter check whether that particular data is deleted or not. So, here you can see that particular data is already deleted. So, that is possible to delete like this. So, here also I am using f as the prefix. So, they will automatically take the variable name. So, here we accepted the value within SNO variable and that variable that we are directly passing to here. So, actually this uh, format method is the easiest one for uh, providing certain values within the string. So, this one is the easiest one that I felt or otherwise you can use dot format also that is depend upon you. So, here I am using f then delete from table name where sno equal to within curly brace we are providing the variable name that we used for the direct insertion process that variable name that I provided here. So, this one is the easiest one that I used here and then if you need to update the data how we will do that that also that we are going to see. So, updation process for that we are accepting sno and salary from the keyboard and then we are using f prefix as a formatted string that we pass it to the update command and then we are providing the commit. So, here I am running it number for updation. I am providing 102 for the updation process and the salary for update. So, I am providing a number like this and that is updated there. So, we are going to counter check whether that is updated or not. So, here you can see that data that is updated here 102 that salary that is updated there. So, like this we can update the data within the table and the last process is how we will provide the display process. So, display also that we can use by using different strategies. So, easiest one is by using the tablet by using the tablet module. This module that I am using here for displaying the data as a table and if you are using any other format uh, that will not be displayed like this. So, th the easiest one is the tablet module. So, here we are using fetch all command. So, what will happen when you are using fetch all? The entire data that will be uh, retrieved from the table and that will be maintained within the variable a and then we are providing tablet that module name dot tablet function. That is an inbuilt function based on the tablet module. Then we are passing this variable or that object to here and then headers which are the column names that we need to display there that we are providing here. Then table format equal to grid as a grid they will display the data. So, we are going to execute it uh, for that we need another statement we need to retrieve the data then only that will be displayed is it. Within the my cursor object we need to accept the value of the first step. So, I provide my cur dot execute then they will automatically retrieve the data within the my cursor object and then we are going to retrieve the data by using fetch all. So, here cur is not defined uh, ok here I used my cur. So, we need to change it my cur that is the variable name that we need to use there. So, here you can see the table that is displayed here the table that is displayed here. So, here an exponential value that is also displayed here uh, that value is provided with a bigger one that is why they are providing an exponential value there. So, like this we can easily display the data within the table format and if you are not using this particular format other formats also available other formatting techniques directly we can print the data. We can directly print the data by using this strategy. 
so here i am using another strategy uh, the as the first step we provide select star from jtp tv we retrieve the data to the my cursor object and then we are printing the data like this this one is also a formatting technique within the printing section if you need to format the data we can use this particular dot format then this particular data that will be displayed here with this indentation so we are setting the indentation and we are trying to display the data by using for loop so you can see that data that will not be displayed oh, i closed it accidentally i need to take it again okay sorry okay we are taking the date program okay so here that data and then we are run it so that data that's provided as a tuple that data that's provided as a tuple and here you can see the date that's taken like this so that's not the correct format for printing the data if you provide the date and other things and we need to iterate that particular values as one by one so that we need to think about it and you need to call it tuple format that uh, you know how to extract it so just try to do it and then if you are using some other techniques like this if you provide this format here i am using another technique for printing the data so number name date and size so we iterated the value whatever we accepted from the my cursor object that will be provided as a tuple so we unpacked it and then we are going to print that particular data within this particular locations that was so possible so here you can see the data that's displayed like this so we extracted the data as the first step and then we printed it so that's also possible but uh, the table that's provided with indentation but that's not within the uh, within a correct format or uh, that's not that much good for reviewing the content so that's why we are using the tablate module for this particular purpose i felt like the tablate module is more comfortable when you are displaying the data uh, you can see the difference once again i'm running it here you can see the data that's displayed as a table so like this we can display the data by using tablate function so uh, tablate module so that's also possible otherwise uh, you need to manually display it by using this particular strategy this particular strategy also that you can use the this one is also that you can use that so format function that we are using so number name date and salary that we extracted from the tuple format when you are using my cursor dot fetch all or the type of data that they are retrieving they are retrieving the data as row by row as a tuple so that data that we are unpacked here itself and that we pass it to the format function and we provide the proper indentation technique by using this format technique so zero location means n no one name then date like that we are printing the data so uh, date within the second location and within the third location salary so like that we are providing the data printing process so like this we can display the data so either of these particular formats that you can use for the displaying the content so up to this much only we are taking in this video so how we will create this particular enter insertion select update and delete process as a menu driven and how we will club the file handling along with that that we will discuss within the coming video thank you